Lisa, we'll be back standing, we'll be back to you. So welcome. This is home for the last four months since <laughs> April, since the COVID operations began. The day starts with worship, and then a bit of exercise, and then after that we will start the tour for Reva subdivision. So this is how I start my day with a little bit of worship. Offering of a lamp and incense in the morning just to thank the good Lord for the day. So, this is actually. Okay, good morning and again. So, let's go for a morning walk. This is Rajeshini and this is Tarai, my friends, who will be joining us in the walk. The morning walk is part of our routine and uh, especially with the team it's been a normal routine exercise for the last uh, few months because it has team bonding, we have team bonding together and then it keeps us physically uh, fit and active because most of the work we do is uh, physical eh? like for example extraction, surveillance, going out into the field so we need to be very fit and active eh? People might think exercise makes you tired, but on the contrary, it really energizes you and it really recharges you and uh, your whole day will be very successful. So, um, after a morning workout, it's just good to have a good balance of uh, fruits and uh, I've also got some nuts and seeds with uh, us, especially frontliners, is we don't have a fixed schedule, so we have we have to have uh, proper timing. So I'm just going to prepare lunch and that same lunch will go on for dinner because I usually don't have time to come back and cook. It's a one pot meal so everything cooks just in a pot and while it's been cooking I can just go on to my mail and just check if there's any mails which need my urgent attention. Actually, we learned to accept COVID-19 when my first medical officer actually caught it. He caught it very early on. Say he got it in the first week of uh, uh, May. When he recovered and when he came back in two weeks and he started working with us, we knew that we could recover and we could fight this. And it was very important for the team to quickly realize that we were actually the mainstay and the support. Eh? and we had to have enough uh, courage and we had to have enough empathy and uh, uh, solidarity amongst ourselves. It wasn't easy in the beginning because everybody, naturally, everybody was afraid for their lives, for their loved ones, but then we had our protection, our um, personal protective equipment and we said, we have to do this for the people. Rewa Emergency Operations Center as, and as you can see it's a very informal setup. Eh? We have uh, deliberately wanted an informal setup so our team can come together and in a spirit of family. Eh? So we work like a family and we do have professionalism but the most important thing is solidarity. Eh? And this is uh, Mr. Tonga Vasataki, he is our health inspector and he is managing the EOC operations in Brewa and together both of us we were managing the COVID operations 
and I believe the most important thing in uh, uh, any operation is the unity, the communication, the understanding and respect. Eh? Looking back at the, the four months uh, of operation, we've had some very big challenges, uh, one of which uh, was when staff uh, started to go down, uh, started to get infected. Uh, we had to uh, ensure that staff were kept in um, their own small bubbles. Uh, we had um, contact tracing teams, we had um, medical teams, we had uh, disinfection teams and all sorts of other small teams. So these teams were kept in each uh, small small bubbles just to ensure that if someone uh, in one particular team was infected, the whole operation was not um, jeopardized. I really take my hats off to to these um, uh, civil servants from other government ministries, and uh, we have we even have some volunteers, unpaid volunteers, that are helping out. Um, I really appreciate uh, the works that they've put in, especially um, the group of teachers that we have, so dedicated. Um, while contributing to the achievement of uh, the uh, operation, they, they also carry on the normal tasking from, from the individual schools, which was preparing their um, the, the worksheets and having... I, I went around one time to one of the teams just to supervise what they were doing. I saw one of the teachers um, actually having a video uh, Zoom session with uh, the students and I was, um, I was really taken by how dedicated they were. Our protection for our staff, you know, it, it, it went beyond all duty because we had to make sure that they were not only physically prepared but they were mentally prepared and therefore, you know, we we started, you know, with the sessions we had, the devotion sessions we had. It's more like a, you know, spiritual experience, you know, to to get a whole rounded um, booster and uh, of approach because it's, it was really needed. We were dealing with unpredictable circumstances. This area of operation is very special to us and it is in the Nosori Special School. At one time, we were having so many cases of COVID coming in and then they were actually um, mixing with our outpatients. So we were concerned that our outpatients don't become super spreaders. You know, because Nosori outpatients itself looks after about 400 outpatients per day. And so we had such a situation that both Wining Bokasi and Nosori were unable to cope up with the screening and the outpatients. Mm -hmm. So then Nosori Special School came to the rescue and this is Mr. Jitendra Bhan and he is the manager of the school as well as the chairperson of our board of visitors. And we just approached him once and he said, Sir, can we utilize your school? And immediately he said yes. When I received a call from Dr. Tasi, I thought of saying yes straight away because uh, we need to get together, put our hands together to fight this pandemic. And we always come here because this is where our outpatient services are and our screening services. So those are, in, as you can see, in a very um, open area, good ventilation. So this leaves our major hospitals like Wainim Bokasi and Nosori to just concentrate on emergency cases. So the doctors and nurses in Wainim Bokasi and Nosori are right now just concentrating on emergency cases, whereas the outpatient cases or the routine swabbing can be done here. It puts a lot of pressure on the major hospitals. This is Gunimono High School and this is where the operations first began. Operations first began here in May with the mass screening. Mass screening is where 
we did not have any cases, but if we had any suspicion of any case, we used to go and screen entire villages, entire communities. And also, at one point, we screened the entire Rewa subdivision, meaning all the villages, all the communities, all from Nakasi up to Longani border, and all the way to Sawani border was all screened. Meaning we used to go home to home, check their temperatures, check for COVID symptoms. So this was the base operations from where it all began. This is a drive through In the peak, he was doing about 330 cases per day. The most challenging moments were when we used to do house to house swabbing. We used to go and uh, request people, you know, uh, to get swabbed. We have to explain them what, you know, what are the consequences you won't get swabbed, this and that. And, uh, yeah, the quite challenging part was when you go out to the communities and you have to really explain them. You know, uh, you have to be in isolation and then they used to get mad at, at us, but uh, we as health personnel, we have to do our job, you know. So. Well, we started off with, with 18 volunteers altogether uh, during the mass screening, the target screening. Uh, now we've been dispersed around. We risked our lives in order to do the work that we love and that is helping saving our community. We were all born and bred in Osori, so we will do nothing in order to actually help in order to tackle this battle. As a uh, frontliner, it's quite challenging as uh, we all know that uh, passing away of a loved one is not easy. It's challenging to see that uh, none of their relatives were allowed to even uh, come and see or touch them. So it's upon us, the, the frontliners, to respect and to give in their, the last wishes of the relatives, uh, whatever they want that they wanted, like uh, to dress and to, uh, to put them in a proper way so that uh, their, their loved ones are, uh, uh, are placed in a respectful manner. I have been here for the past four months in the field and I've been just swabbing uh, house to house, doing house to house swabbing, on foot, by foot, in the vehicles, during screening. Actually, I don't want to leave before this thing ends. I want to see the end of it. And we all want to be together when we see and celebrate it and be able to acknowledge how much hard work everyone has done and overcome and gone through everything. And we have finally um, reached our recovery phase. When we were in mitigation phase, we hardly go back home. We were camping in uh, classrooms. We have uh, three to four classrooms that were, that were given by the, the school management for us to be accommodated in. Uh, just to have that uh, fear, going back home, taking back the infection, we sacrificed uh, those luxury spaces and beds that we have back home, but to stay in the classrooms, just to save our families back home. Since we are slowing down the operation, I'm just thankful. And I'm just very glad and emotional, I may say, that we are still here being part of each other from the different professions that we've been uh, tasked. Eh? Uh, especially Dr. Tishma, she's a dental officer. Tevita, he's a lens officer. Petuweli, he's a volunteer. Uh, we have other volunteers out there, even a nurse practitioner, even some who, who, don't even, who are not even well educated, but they lend in hand, their, their hands to help. That just clearly shows that uh, uh, Ministry of Health personnel are not alone in this fight. It's the community as a whole, uh, different ministries, even the, the villages out there. And uh, uh, I would like to thank each and every one of us. Uh, without uh, all your support, uh, I don't think so. We will be able to be slowing down to recover, recovery and uh, rehabilitation phase. We are looking after this Binmono Hall, we are looking after the Binmono Primary School and also the Binmono High School. So this is doing as, as a vaccination and our Binmono Primary School is uh, as an isolation area and our Binmono High School is uh, the, the command center and the swaps are also taking place. And our motive, our motive is to just to get together to save these people of our country. Hexagon shopping complex. 
and currently it is used as a vaccination drive through The function of a drive through is basically people just come in and in the comfort of their vehicles, they just get the vaccination. So the advantage is it's, it's efficient, it's convenient and it's safe. Welcome to Wining Bukrasi Hospital and Health Center. This is Dr. Seru and this is Dr. Fane and they help run Wining Bukrasi Health Facility. Initially, when the case in Nandali came, the doctor called me. I went to EOC there, and they announced that we had a positive case from Nandali. I'm from Nandali, so it was a big shock. We had to go to the family first. The family that were positive who were waiting to be extracted. That was the first step. Yeah. Then from there we built on uh, the, all this uh, screening and all. Eh? A lot of stigma in the beginning. Uh, it, it helped a lot that I'm from there. Because the first case was from Mandali. And uh, everybody was, uh, the stigma associated with it. Eh? Because of, uh, it, and also with misinformation that was going around. Uh, a lot of uh, effort had to go first into quelling all that misinformation. The hours were long. Initially when we were working in EOC, we had to do a debriefing at about 8 or 9, when people came back from the field. And uh, some would come back at uh, 10 or 11 in the night. And then we'd have to all wait around to debrief, and then briefing again in the morning at around 7 6. As a doctor, as a mother, the long hours, staying away from your family, uh, worrying about your children, um, and, uh, and actually contracting the virus yourself. Uh, that was one of the biggest uh, fear, um, if you were to get sick and knowing the uh, symptoms that were associated with the sickness, um, what if come into your mind, what if you, uh, you are one of those that get, uh, yeah, so that was one of the biggest <laughs> fear for me. For us, it was, Covid happened but we had to run normal services like we had to uh, have uh, our maternity services where we deliver babies and we had to have uh, um, people coming in through outpatients and if we did not see them in a timely way then they could become emergencies so we had our response team and we had our normal operational activities running to some extent simultaneously this whole building comprises of antenatal clinic where we care for pregnant ladies. Um, Rewa, Netasiri and Telebu and Nasinu, some from Suva as well. Whoever comes in, they are seen in here. Uh, and we have um, antenatal wards, postnatal for those who have delivered and we have two labor wards. Mothers were flooding from Suva to no sorry. We were overwhelmed with the crowd. But we were ready. The rail was ready because we have resources. We never run out of resources from station rain to drugs. We have doctors and nurses who, uh, when we jumped to travel actually because of COVID, they were ready to take hold of the call eh, that was given to them. Um, we were afraid that we might get positive, and we did get positive. I am one who get positive, but we fought it because we had the two jabbed, and we are still here working. When we came back, we tried to normalize service, but with COVID protocol. Eh? Um, then we realized, okay, COVID is here, it's cool down, run the servers, give our service the mission. We still have our mission and vision at hand. We focus on that while we are combating COVID at the same time. We never close the service. Mm -hmm. Clinics still run. At the time we reach uh, more than 70 antenatal mothers that come for first booking. We had to close it because we were reaching 3 o'clock and the nurse and the doctors need to have a break. And then we asked them, come back next week, but come before 7 because we are anticipating that number from all over Suba, Cunningham, Rewanga. They were running. They were running here because we never close the service. But we keep telling them, please, mask up all the time. Don't bring your children, all these things. So yes, we have embraced COVID. We survived. And one. Yeah.
we did. <laughs> no maternal death. That's why I can say we win the battle against COVID. For no sorry, for rest of division, there's no maternal death here. This is administration of uh, Rewa subdivision. The main function is to make sure things run smoothly and making sure everybody goes on leave on time, making sure everybody's um, being paid on time and making sure that uh, everybody is walking to the work ethics and work culture and there's professionalism and the disciplinary part is uh, handled by Razia. With the increase in numbers of uh, these COVID patients and all, um, our staffs really worked long hours. And so, in terms of human resource, that is one of the factors that we really have to look at, the welfare of our staffs. They really worked beyond and uh, long hours and staying away from their families, accommodated in bubbles, in hotels, and uh, um, I, I would say that, it, that was really, really challenging. Okay, so welcome to one of the busiest emergencies in the Central Division. This is a Nosori emergency. It used to be a health center, but like I explained earlier in the morning, we converted it into an emergency facility, which looks after both COVID and non-COVID patients. We had to do it, because we had to give assistance to patients as they came in, without actually um, delaying their treatment. Our most important thing was response. So the whole reason why we have set up in such a way was to make sure that the response is very timely. So we have the Sawani border. This is uh, the, one of the two borders we look after. One is Sawani and the other is Longani border. And in Sawani border, this is one of our busiest borders. Eh? As you can see, we have our health staff on this side who screen all the vehicles who are coming through. And the most important thing is safety. Eh? They're trying to ensure that the persons who go through are not COVID positive and they have their screening protocols. And as you can see, the weather is not favorable. But come rain and come shine, these young men and women, they never stand down from their duties because they have a duty to protect and um, this is one of our most uh, challenging areas because they have to withstand all elements of the weather and it's not favorable. The last four months have not been favorable, especially it was chilly, cold and they come, sometimes used to come at 4 a.m. in the morning and uh, they come in the weekend because uh, the border is one place where we are trying to make sure that people, they adhere to the COVID protocols. We don't want the other areas to become infected. And with me, is Kopal Rupiate. He's currently manning all the borders and the isolation facilities. And Kopal um, Rupiate will explain more about the border control. Yeah, Bula, um, as a doctor that you just mentioned, the border usually open at uh, four o'clock. And uh, <coughs> we have uh, two sets of team, one that st start from 4 and uh, knock off at uh, 11.30 and the second team, they started at uh, 11.30 and they knock off at uh, 7 o'clock, same as uh, the Longani border. So yeah, they usually screen everyone that enters the border and they, and they tell everyone like those who have first dose, those who have second dose, those who have not yet uh, vaccinated and uh, those who are underage. So that's usually what they do here every day. A young team of uh, hard-working individuals who walk all the way and how it happens is they get cases and as soon as they get cases they start phoning and then categorization of them. And here we have Dr. Kichione. The risk assessment team is also the heart of the mitigation phase within uh, our rail subdivision. Okay? So whatever we assess from here, we throw it to the mobile medical team, we throw it to the extraction team, who will then um, go forward and to carry out whatever um, directive we, we send from here. 
So that's basically what uh, my team uh, is all about. And the thing about my team is that thank the government for the whole government approach. We have uh, hardworking ladies. I have a team of, of ladies here from other ministries. So I'm the only medical personnel here. The rest are from the Ministry of Fisheries. We have a teacher here with us who's been involved uh, since the beginning uh, of our operation in April, and she's still here every single day. These are all mothers. Most of them are mothers except one. <laughs> and uh, they've been here every day, and we work till late at night. Um, uh, any time of the night when the cases started to trickle in, we have to, um, uh, you know, call them and make sure that they are all right. So now we are lucky since we are going towards the recovery phase slowly, uh, the cases has dropped significantly. And now we, we kind of have you know, a bit of breathing space. But then we used to knock off really late at night, sometimes the next, early next morning, even though it's quite hard being away from family. Uh, but we're still here for the, for the love of our motherland and its people. This is our only isolation facility. Uh, this is Bunimono Primary School. And in this isolation facility, the COVID patients who are considered to be moderate risk, they are put over here. Or those who live very far away and they may need um, oxygen or if they're pregnant, they are advised to come over here in this isolation facility. All the patients who have been admitted here, they've gone home. There have been no deaths in this isolation facility. I'm staying here for more than two months and I've been working here with the patients. And uh, in the beginning, we already, we had 65 or more cases here, patients and children and uh, people from various ages. And uh, slowly by slowly, patients uh, were recovering and they went back home. Eh? Especially, I'm from Monoheni and this border, I haven't been home for long. And, uh, but uh, we just have to walk hard again and just to beat this COVID so that we can go quickly home. And uh, otherwise, whatever facility we are given, we just have to maintain and uh, walk through it. Whatever resources are given, it's enough. And we will walk with that uh, resources we have. This is just a typical day um, of our normal day-to-day uh, -day functions of our response team and uh, I, I believe that uh, our support was tremendous especially from our Minister for Health, our Permanent Secretary for Health and my Divisional Medical Officer. They've been extremely supportive and uh, they've uh, been very um, uh, personal and they've actually called us so many times, visited us many times and assisted us when we had some difficulties. Eh? So we'd like to acknowledge their guidance and uh, it's with their uh, direction and their leadership we were able to um, follow the pattern. And whatever they said, we took it in great faith and we knew it was backed by scientific evidence and we supported them. And in turn, our team, they supported us. So uh, I, I believe in times of um, uh, disaster, we have to support each other because the aim should be one and that should be, you know, that we have to get Fiji back to normal once again. Eh? The frontline workers everywhere in the world with this crisis or any crisis for that matter really are our heroes. And uh, unfortunately, they're also the, those who in a context like this, the first ones to be vilified. Um, there's always this fear that people who come to the community to help you are bringing the virus, whether they're coming to vaccinate you or they're trying to respond to you know, a, a health crisis within a community. We've obviously been providing resources to them, um, whether you're talking about the COVAX facility bringing in vaccines that they can then uh, go out and distribute, or you're talking about support um, through uh, other types of assistance, such as providing PPEs, other equipment and uh, the supplies that they need to continue their work and to continue to protect themselves. We also have to be mindful that they have taken a toll in terms of their mental health. 
uh, of course we all have this pandemic has affected everybody's mental health and psychosocial support for different groups is quite important um, and I am particularly uh, focused on ensuring that we support any kind of uh, psychosocial assistance that's required for frontline workers. They have taken an enormous toll and I think we have to all be eternally grateful to those people who spend time away from their families, uh, days and nights, stuck in quarantine sometimes, sometimes getting sick themselves. Uh, unfortunately, some of them have passed away. So I think this is a time as, as we look forward to say a collective thank you to all of these people. As medical officers, our primary business is to save lives, but in the past few months, it has been um, more than saving lives. It's been saving families. It's been making sure that the family stays together, and it's uh, making sure that uh, we are able to understand their sufferings, their pains. So it's more than the call of normal medical duties. And uh, we'd like to acknowledge all our stakeholders, we've met so many kind and nice persons who've been willing to assist us. We'd like to thank our patients, uh, all the persons who entrusted themselves unto our care. When they came, they said, please help us. And you know, when they came with that level of trust, we had to uh, make sure we don't let them down. And uh, we were willing to go the extra mile to make sure that uh, all our patients were well looked after. We do apologize if there were some shortcomings, um, and, uh, but we tried our best to make sure that we assisted everybody. I'd like to acknowledge my whole team of uh, Rewa subdivision. They have been, these are medical staff who have been working day and night, 12 hours um, non-stop, and they didn't have any leaves or any breaks. Uh, at times, my doctors or nurses or health staff had their families become positive and I could see the emotional uh, turmoil they were facing but they never abandoned their duties not even for a moment and um, this hard-working group of young men and women they just uh, encouraged us and uh, allowed us to actually see that um, we don't leave anybody behind.